Hi, everybody. Welcome to my lecture on International Framework for Environmental Protection. I am Megumi Maruyama, and I actually, I'm a lecturer of environmental protection at Yamaguchi University and Nanzan University in Nagoya. My major is wide ranging. It includes physics, forestry, hydrology, environmental sciences, and remote sensing. So uh, let's get started with introduction to the environmental problems. So let's see the goal of this present course. Well, our planet is facing serious environmental problems caused by the humans recently. So this course is addressed to the students for better understanding of the scientific knowledge on the environmental issues. Through the lectures on the environmental topics in concern, we will discuss how to remediate the situation for making our future better. And what will we learn in this course? The present course will bring you an accurate and updated knowledge on the actual environmental problems making more conscious of an urgent need for remediation of the Earth's depleted environment. So you will be required a deep understanding of the env environmental problems that are common in the developed countries and in the developing countries as well. So now let's see about the anthropogenic depletion. Anthropogenic, as you know, it is the activity of the humans. The students will be aware of the seriousness of the anthropogenic depletion and how this fact will affect not only the humans, but also the living creatures of our biosphere. You should always think about the environmental situation of your home country also comparing with different countries. The lecture covers the environmental issues on air, land, and water, foc focusing on the updated international regulations of the global environmental policy. So what we have now for the actual environmental issues, we have the problem of COVID-19, each day it is increasing, the cases, climate change, global warming. This is included in the climate change. Fukushima Daiichi disaster, who lives in Japan can feel this influence still now, even after 12 years of the accident. Oil spills of the deep horizon the oil spills in the ocean is a very serious problem. Every year, uh, there are so many ships wrecking and leaking oils on the ocean. Conflicts, Russia versus Ukraine, NATO behind Ukraine, Syria, Sudan, North Korea, this last are always firing missiles. And this country fired missiles the last month in January, 2022. Seven times in Japan Sea, 2022, January. We have also refugees, problem in Syria, Afghanistan, Rohingya, Uyghurs, Sudan, 
エチオピア、コンゴ。And now, let, let's see the top 10 environmental concerns of the 21st century, according to 200 researchers of 50 countries. This is the research made by UNEP, United Nations Environmental Policy, 2000. Let's, let us see. The first was climate change, 51%. Water shortage, 29%. Third, deforestation and desertification, 28%. Fourth, water pollution, 28%. So we have a problem of water shortage and also water pollution. Fifth, Lack of administration, 27%. That's why there are so many conflict, conflicts in the world and so many ref, refugees because of that. Sixth is biodiversity loss, 23%. Seventh, population growth and migration, 22%. Eighth, Change of social values, 21%. Ninth, waste management, 20%. And 10th is air pollution, 20%. So today we are uh, not uh, commenting about each case because through the lectures, I will comment each, each one deeply. So、uh, today, I'd like to show you what we will do in our 15 lectures of 90 minutes each. First,、uh, the first lecture will be introduction to the environmental problems, as I'm doing now. The second is about the global warming and Paris Agreement. The third is chemical toxics and Minamata disease in Japan. This is the pollution, very famous pollution of Japan. The fourth lecture will be on Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant accident that happened in,、uh, on March 11th, 2000. 11. Then, fifth will be ocean contamination by the plastic and oil spill.、Uh, the sixth lecture will be on deforestation of the world. The seventh lecture will be on biodiversity loss of the world. This is、uh, deeply、uh, linked to deforestation. And the eighth is contamination by the weapons. Ninth, nuclear power plant accident. We,、uh, do, we do have so many, many、uh, power plant accidents in the world. For example, Chernobyl in Ukraine,、uh, three miles in the United States, wind scale. In England and some, some incidents in French, in France also. So let's see this in, on our ninth lecture. And the tenth will be on atmospheric pollution. This is very serious in many, many, pro, many, many countries. And eleventh, water pollution. Water pollution leads to the、uh, water contamination,、uh, to the pollution of many, many uh, serious uh, health diseases. And 12th will be in more details asbestos and P4 litigation chemicals, PFOA. This is a very dangerous and banned chemical. Then, 
in 13, on 13th lecture, we will uh, study about the environmental management systems. And I saw 14,001. These are the regulations for the uh, better running the industries, companies, and big or organizations as hospitals, universities, and so on. So that we uh, don't uh, keep our earth in a dangerous situation. 14th is on energy and environment. Uh, we have a very strong relationship between the energy and environment. Uh, just as uh, the global warming. And 15, the last lecture will be, it will be the overview and abstracts of the assignments of each student. Okay, so these are my, the content of my lectures, 15 lectures. So now, I asked you to write the assignments on Rachel Carson's book on Silent Spring or uh, another book on Our Stolen Future of Theo Coban. So if you read Rachel Carson, it will be a very uh, important and interesting video for you about pesticides DDT. Rachel Carson, Silent Spring. This is the historical clips on DDT of Rachel Carson and science explaining why humans pollute. This is the video put together for the Master of Science in Environmental Technology at Imperial College London. Another video is this one, Rachel Carson, a not so silent activist. Yeah, Rachel Carson spoke out many, many serious problems to the world. So this is also very interesting, nine minutes. Another interesting video, on Rachel Carson is this, chapter one, Rachel Carson, American Experiences. And Rachel Carson is an intimate portrait of the woman whose groundbreaking books revolutionized our relationship to the natural world. When Silent Spring was published in September, 1962, it became an instant bestseller and would go on to spark dramatic changes in the way the government regulated pesticides. At that time in the United States, the president was uh, President Kennedy. And he made a very, very famous speech, including the name of Rachel Carson. And after that speech, he introduced the regulations for the chemicals. And in 1964, Rachel Carson died uh, by cancer. But after Rachel Carson, many chemists uh, went uh, may, uh, doing the researches and they discovered many new uh, bad uh, effects of the chemicals on living animals. So this is another video, interesting. Uh, this is the letter to the president about chemicals disrupting our bodies by Theo Coburn. And this is uh, later uh, after Rachel Carson's died. So this is a very interesting video also because she uh, tells us about the uh, endocrine disruptor chemicals. So she found that 
some chemicals like DDT or PCB disturb the reproductive organs of many uh, animals, including humans. So it is a very serious problem that she put and spoke out to the public. And the Theo Coburn is founder and president of the Endocrine Disruption Exchange based in Peonia, Colorado, and Professor Emeritus of Zoology at the University of Florida, Gainesville. She's an environmental health analyst and best known for her studies on the health effects of endocrine disrupting chemicals. Both Rachel Carson and Theo Coburn, uh, they are biologists. Another interesting video to be watched, I recommend to watch is this, Sivan Kali Suzuki at Rio Summit 1992. This uh, Sivan is a girl. Now she's not a girl, she's 42 years old. But at that moment of Rio Summit, uh, this, this was the first international environmental meeting that was held in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil in 1992. And she made a very uh, stunning uh, speech to the authorities and to the government. Sivar is an activist and writer who has been speaking out about social justice and environmental issues since she was small. At age nine, she started the environmental children's organization, ECHO, with a group of friends committed to learning and teaching others about environmental issues. In 1992, with ECHO, Sivar attended the Rio Earth Summit in Brazil, where at the age of 12, she delivered a powerful speech that garnered worldwide attention. For this, she received the United Nations Environment Programs Global 500 Award in Beijing the following year. So uh, if you'd like to take a look at her whole speech, you should look at this address, uh, persuasive speech that silenced the world questions. And I put some uh, parts of her speech here. She says, after the introduction, she says, I'm here to speak for all generations to come. I'm here to speak on behalf of the starving children around the world whose cries go ahead unheard. I'm here to speak for the countless animals dying across this planet because they have nowhere left to go. I'm afraid to go out in the sun now because of the holes in our ozone. I'm afraid to breathe the air because I don't know what chemicals are in it. I used to go fishing in Vancouver, my home, with my dad until just a few years ago. We found a fish full of cancers. And now we hear of animals and plants going extinct every day, vanishing forever. In my life, I have dreamt of seeing the great herds of wild animals, jungles, and rainforests full of birds and butterflies. But now I wonder if they will even exist for my children to see. Did you have to worry of these things when you were my age? She was at that time 12 years old. All this is happening before our eyes. And yet we act as if we have all the time we want and all the solutions. 
I'm only a child and I don't have all the solutions, but I want you to realize neither to you, neither do you. You don't know how to fix the holes in our ozone layer. You don't know how to bring the salmon back up a dead stream. You don't know how to bring back an animal now extinct. And you can't bring back the forest that once grew where there is now a desert, desert. If you don't know how to fix it, please stop breaking it. Today, uh, she is now 42 years old. And since then, Sivern has served on the United Nations Earth Charter Commission and on Kofi Annan Special Advisor Panel for the 2002 World Summit on Sustainable Development in Johannesburg. She also co-founded the Skyfish Project, an internet-based think tank that encourages youth to speak out for their future and adapt a sustainable lifestyle. In 2000, she and five friends carried out a power shift across Canada cycling campaign to raise awareness about climate change and air pollution. Currently, Sivan Lai lives on the Pacific West Coast archipelago Haida Gwaii with her husband and little boy. Here she studies the Haida language and hosts APTN's Samakan, Water Stories, a series about First Nations and water issues now heading into its third season. She's a board member of the David Suzuki Foundation and the Haida Gwaii Higher Education Society, a spark for the Girls Action Foundation and a sustainability speaker worldwide. She hopes her pursuit of traditional and scientific knowledge and education to using her voice will help her promote a culture of diversity, sustainability, and joy. So if these kind of people don't speak, speak out, the uh, COEs, of the big industries, factories, will continue keep uh, throwing the garbages or polluted water or polluted air to the atmosphere. And this kind of uh, very uh, courageous activity is uh, very, very uh, valuable for the earth. Here are some books on environmental problems. You are encouraged to take a look at the following books in the library of Yamaguchi University or in your universities about introduction to environmental management, global environmental policy, ecological risk assessment, and all the recent scientific literature in science, nature, natural geographic, ambio, climate change, and so on. Take a look at the sites of the United Nations homepage. For, for example, WWF, UNDP, UNEP, UNICEF, WHO, WMO. And visit also the homepages of the Department of the Environment of your home country to find about the mediation on the environmental problems. Update your information, taking attention to the results of the yearly discussion held at the International Conference on Global Warming, Biodiversity, Health, NPT, IPCC, COP26, and others. So you have to update because every year uh, there are new challenges or uh, new uh, accidents or new bad uh, things that happen in whole world. So that's why the updating the information is very important. 
And I think that newspaper, reading newspaper or newspaper in the on internet is also uh, very helpful. This is another very good uh, this, uh, speech on global warming by Greta Thunberg. She's a young climate activist and, and she made a speech just like uh, Suzuki in 1992. And she was 16 years old at this time of Climate Action Summit 2019. It's nice to take a look at this. And another one that I recommend you to watch is this, United Nations Chief, unless we change course, there is a high risk of failure of COP26. Climate action, YouTube. This COP26 uh, was held in London, I think, and it was in 2021. So, this is a very new one. So I recommend you to watch this video. And another videos for better understand, understanding of what is happening really in details in the world. For example, this is the Peru and the Andes living on the climate change front lines. Another one is this Kiribati battling for survival for the rising sea levels. Mozambique, recovering from two cyclones. This is also because of the rising sea levels. The coastal part of Mozambique was flooded because of the cyclones, but uh, heavily flooded because the rising sea levels also. Barbados, this is another problem of the sea level rise, coastal erosion. Uh, this is uh, by the United Nations. And the United Nations chief sees climate impacts ahead of COP26. So these uh, happenings are really very serious and it is uh, all over the world, especially in the Pacific Islands. This is another very nice video, a NASA live stream, Earth from Space, live views from the International Space Station. So this is live and you, can see uh, where, where the International Space Station is running. This is the NASA ISS live stream from aboard the International Space Station as it circles the Earth at 240 miles above the planet on the edge of space in low Earth orbit. The station is crewed by NASA astronauts as well as Russian cosmonauts and a mixture of Japanese, Canadian, and European astronauts as well. The actual expedition 65 crew 2022 are Akihiko Hoshide and Thomas Pesquet, uh, commander, Shane Kimbrough, Megan MacArthur, Oleg Novitsky, Piotr Dubrov, Mark van der Hey. Anton Shkaplerov, Yulia Peroselt, Klim Shipenko on board as part of a film. Now, this is another problem. Are we running out of space above Earth? So, while recent news about the Chinese Long March 5 rocket made a lot of people very nervous because a 22 ton rocket was going to fall out of the sky in 2021, late 2021. 
this sort of thing happens all the time nowadays. Boosters, dead satellites, and sometimes even old space stations get dropped out of the sky fairly often. Why, why the litter seems a little inconsiderate. This is probably far safer than the alternative. The accumulation of space junk poses a huge risk to all human operations in space, especially if we cross the threshold into the chain reaction of exponentially growing collisions known as the Kessler syndrome. Have you ever uh, heard about this Kessler syndrome? It's a very serious problem nowadays. So, remove debris mission highlights. This also you should uh, watch uh, this video. So, remove debris is aimed at performing key active debris removal, ADR technology demonstrations to find the best way to capture the estimated 40,000 pieces of space debris that is orbiting Earth. Scientists, engineers, industry experts, and policymakers spent the virtual four days conference discussing the latest issues surrounding space debris. So space debris nowadays uh, are a very serious problem. They exchanged the latest research try to come up with solutions for potential problems and define the future direction of any necessary action. This is another recommended video. On 20 April, 2021, European Space Agency hosted the eighth European Conference on Space Debris from Darmstadt in Germany. There were currently over 129 million objects, larger than a millimeter, in orbits around Earth. These range from inactive satellites to flakes of paint. But no matter how small the item of debris, anything traveling up to 56,000 kilometers per hour in an orbit is dangerous if it comes into contact with the many satellites that connect us around the world, be it for GPS, mobile phone data, or internet connectivity. Do you know uh, how much is the velocity of bullet train Japan? It is 300 kilometers per hour. even 300 kilometers per hour. If you see the bullet train running, you will be shocked by the velocity, so high velocity. But the velocity of the debris surrounding our earth is running 56,000 kilometers per hour. And it is very dangerous if it hits the ast astronauts, for example, making or fixing uh, out of the space spaceship. If it hits the man, the astronaut, it will be killed immediately. It's very dangerous. The solution is to take action before it's too late. This is why European Space Agency has commissioned Clear Space One, the world's first mission to remove space debris for launch in 2025. It's a kind of new, new business on space. The Earth is contaminated not only by the COVID-19, but also by the garbages from deep seas to the top of Himalaya, polar regions, and space. The Mariana Trench, the deepest point in the ocean, extends nearly 10,000 
and five, 975 meters down in a remote part of the Pacific Ocean near the Philippine Islands. But if you thought the trench could escape the global onslaught of plastics pollution, you would be wrong. A recent study revealed that the plastic bag, like the kind given away at the grocery stores, is now the deepest known piece of plastic trash found at a depth of 10,975 meters inside the Mariana Trench. So now let's take a look at deep sea debris database. Scientists found it by looking through the deep sea debris database, a collection of photos and videos taken from 5,010 dives over the past 30 years that was recently made public. While the Mariana Trench may seem like a dark, lifeless pit, it hosts more life than you might think. Noah's Okeanos Explorer vessel searched the region's depths in 2016 and found diverse life forms, including species, species like coral, jellyfish, and octopus. The recent study also found that 17% of the images of plastic locked in the database showed interactions of some kind with marine life, like animals becoming entangled in the debris. This is a Japanese submarine, Shinkai 6500. So as the name indicates, this submarine goes down to 6,500 meters. And this submarine discovered a big amount of plastic garbage in the deep seas of the Pacific near the Japanese coast. This is a picture of mannequin head, plastic mannequin head taken by, taken by Shinkai submarine at 6,271 meters depth in the Pacific Ocean. This picture was taken in 1991 July, and this in 1992, also July. So the depth is a little bit uh, uh, more shallow here, seven meters more shallow than this 1991. But you can see here the marine animals living on this mannequin, plastic mannequin head. So let's know now the wonders about our planet. I recommend that you watch this video, very nice video to understand how Earth is beautiful. So after watching this, you will find that you will think that we have to take much care with love, our planet. And I told you about so many, many garbage problems on our earth and above. And we have to think more about the earth friendly acts instead of uh, throwing garbages. For that acts, we have to uh, act for through these kind of uh, activities using solar energy, wind power, electric car, home electric generator, 100 recycling of home electric gadgets, greening of desserts, water project capturing CO2, and many, many, many 
others among many uh, useful activities. So let's learn through my lecture, more 14 lecture about this. Okay, so uh, that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching it. And I hope you learned something about the Earth's problem today. So see you on our next lecture. Bye for now. Stay healthy. Good luck. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.